Hi, everybody. Um, being in the orthopedics business, that was a pretty cool presentation right there. That's good stuff. Um, so I am the CEO and founder of Octa Surgical. We are in the business of uh, solving the problem of children's scoliosis and doing so in a non-fusion uh, manner with a dynamic uh, system. Uh, scoliosis is a big problem. Everybody's aware of it. Everybody probably knows somebody that has scoli, uh, maybe even your own, in your own family. Um, progresses from mild to moderate to severe with different treatment plans along the way. Um, so the first line of defense is bracing. So kids start bracing very early and continue it for years and oftentimes doesn't do much. It has to, you have to be very compliant. It's really hard to get kids to be compliant on bracing. It's not the greatest thing in the world and it's, it's considered non-invasive, but it's, it's quite invasive actually on, on so many levels. Um, the, next, the next phase is fusion. Um, that's when you get to a dramatic Cobb angle, 40 to 50 degrees. You, uh, you have problems, you need to have uh, fusion surgery. Most people are aware of what fusion surgery is. It's a very traumatic surgery, lots of hardware, long recovery times, and you know, most importantly, it's just, it's with you forever. You can't go back from fusion, and generally speaking, you have more surgeries as you progress through life. So uh, what we're addressing is, is a treatment option that has, has kind of bubbled up in the last five or six years almost by accident. Um, it's called vertebral body tethering. And what happens with tethering is this sort of white cord that you see running along the side of the spine is placed uh, with screws um, laterally. It's affixed to each screw. And that, that cord can be tensioned between each level operatively. And then as a patient grows, they s essentially grow into a straight spine. Growth modulation is, is the process. And it's an incredibly elegant, clever approach to, to solve a problem. And this was just done by accident because a bunch of surgeons took a look at an existing system that was on the market from Zimmer that was used for posterior fixation. And they kind of cobbled together this. And so for the last five or six years, a thousand kids have been, have been uh, uh, operated on with this system and it works. And it, this wasn't designed for this indication, but they've made it work. Um, there are limitations that I'll get into in a little while. The tether can break, it wasn't designed for this, and you can't adjust it ever over time. You're kind of stuck with that, and the kids can actually grow, outgrow their tether, and they need additional surgery. Um, this is the group uh, involved here. Uh, the, the, the top guys were with me and my previous company. I had a previous final implant company that we grew and sold to Stryker. Um, pretty familiar with the business. Uh, the, the clinical advisors and co-founders here are very well-known guys in this field. So Mohammed Diab is at UCSF. Uh, I met Mohammed uh, originally about three years ago. The original, the Octus was founded because I licensed technology from UCSF that was a magnetically growing rod technology that we have, and I'm not gonna talk about that today, but I'm, I'm talking about the, the tethering system. So I had that technology, I talked to Mohammed, he said, you know what, you should look, you should look at tethering. This is just something that I'm doing, some other guys are doing, this is really what's gonna happen in the future. I went, watched a couple of cases with Muhammad and said, wow, this is something else. After seeing so many fusion surgeries in my career, it was just great to see a procedure like this. And we just talked and we said, well, why don't we combine the technologies and just make it adjustable via the, the magnetic technology from the rods and do it with the tethers. So that's what we did. So that's the foundation of this company. Um, this is the power of the tethering procedure as currently uh, done. So this is a, this is a child who was uh, 11 years old, still growing, probably gonna get a fusion in a year or two, um, but Muhammad is doing the tethering procedure. So two years after tethering, oops, um, two years after tethering, she's got a straight spine and it stayed that way. Now it could overgrow and she'd have to have maybe another surgery, but in this case, no, it did not overgrow. So what happens with tethering? Lots of benefits over fusion. Everything's beneficial over fusion is what it comes down to. So you get growth, motion, one treatment event, not multiple surgeries, and you don't have the same kind of scarring and, and issues with, with fusion. I mean, you don't burn any bridges either, by the way, so you can still do a fusion surgery if you had to. So we know from Shriners who have done, you know, they've done 500 of these cases. Two of the Shriners guys are, are our co-founders. They've been collecting data and doing lots of analysis, and it's just a terrific procedure on so many levels. Cost savings, so much less hardware, shorter procedure, procedure time, hospital stay, everything Everything points to this on so many levels. Um, so this is what we're doing. We're taking the same basis of a tethering procedure, but we're providing a better tether, a much stronger tether, easier to work with, 
we're affixing screws at the top and the bottom. This is a dynamic system. You can adjust this. You can tension this and release the, te the tether in a non-surgical way via magnetic technology with an external controller. So I'll just show you how this works. So the, the, the screws and the engine at the bottom go into the lateral spine, and these are pretty easy, these are small screws. And the tether runs up through the screws and it fixes at the top, and now you can tension the spine. So you can tension operatively or later or whenever you want to. Now gradually you can tension and create essentially a straight spine. And, and the good thing with our dynamic system is once the spine is straight, you can release the tether and the, and the child now has a straight spine in full motion forever. We've done pigs, kept pigs alive for 10 weeks, 12 weeks. System works great. This is actually in vivo what it looks like. Here's an example of how that tether works. If you look at the two, two weeks post-op uh, number, it's 14.4 centimeters long as the segment. We tensioned it, did a quick tensioning uh, session, reduced it by about a centimeter and a half. So that, that was, we did that continuously to all these pigs. And so the system worked. These are pigs that grew from 25 kilos to 50. They were running around, very active pigs. System held up, worked throughout the entire process. We feel good about how this thing works. So what are we doing? What markets are we addressing? The market on the left is sort of the current tether market. These are kids who are still growing. They're roughly 8 to 12. Um, they, have, they have pretty flexible spines still. That's what, that's what the surgeons are looking at today. So that's the world we're going to sort of play in first with our initial trials. Um, but the, the, the third one, the future market, early intervention, that's where we want to be. That is getting to the kids earlier when, before they have to be braced, before they have to have fusion surgery, because that's where this is really going to be powerful. Because we're going to offer a uh, endoscopic surgery, three small incisions, an hour-long surgery to put that tether in. Uh, really, the, the key here is just between Zimmer and us, it's the overcorrection management. The, the dynamic system is really the mo most important thing here. And we're going to have a much better tether. So regulatory, we've had a lot of discussions with the FDA, very, very ongoing all the time, and it's been great. So the FDA is really, really supportive of this technology. Um, they gave Zimmer a HDE approval because Zimmer had all this data, and so they finally put some together. The FDA wanted to provide some clarity here, and they did. So that has led to a lot of great conversations about what we are going to do with our initial trials. And so I'm not going to get into all that, but that's all positive. And basically, the FDA has decided to uh, do a much better job on pediatric implants and, and the way they dialogue with, with industry. And, and really, by, by lowering the bar, not, not safety-wise, but on the size of trials, uh, it's hard to do randomized trials in pediatrics. We're not going to have to do any of that. So just key here, we're in the middle of a $2 million seed financing. We've had different, different monies into the company. That'll get us up to a first-in-man trial, which we expect to begin next year. And then we'll do a big financing. So you know, really, we've, we've got a system that works. We've evolved the system. We put it in. It works. It's durable. It's reliable. Um, we're, we're in an active dialogue with the FDA. We, we know what we're going to do next. Um, and. and uh, you know, we've got a great team. We've, you know, we've won a couple of these pediatric device cons consortium awards, non-dilutive non grants, um, you know, against 50 odd different technologies. So this is a, you know, game changers used a little bit too much, but this really is. If we can do something other than fusion, everybody wants this. We know this. The families want it. Surgeons want it. Companies want it. And our system is dynamic, and that's the most, most important part. I'll just leave this with uh, Mohamed Diab. He's our co-founder, been doing a lot of tethering surgeries. Tethering is clearly patient-driven. I don't promote it, but patients find me. And once they've discovered that this is an option, I can rarely talk them back to anything else, including fusion. There you have it, Octosurgical. Thank you very much.